Hello, it's me again, the buyer, and we're back in our luxury campaign, currently driving the fourth generation Bramble, the prototype of our cash cow, which will hopefully get us into new realms of prosperity, because this is the first car that I have ever placed into a huge car factory, and I'm really looking forward to what this will do to our sales numbers and campaign score and capability to further drive our R&D and marketing into previously unseen numbers. The Bramble itself turned out pretty nice, so I'm somewhat happy with the design concepts I have for this brand, also in the modern age, and it also drives like a modern car, so it's really nice, planted, um, pretty hard to unsettle and yeah, the, the standard version which we are driving here is not too overpowered which also doesn't make it too hard to control and you can also work with a little bit of throttle input to get it moving and this is a problem i have with real life cars real life cars nowadays have become so powerful nowhere you can actually drive them properly because you can only work with 20 30 percent of throttle input and then you are already over the speed limit so it's always better to have a little bit less power but then you can really floor it work through the gears and after 30 seconds you're still only 80 kilometers an hour fast so that's probably why i'm more into older cars than newer cars anyway back to the campaign yeah we're close to the end this time around we will work on the new windley which is our city car so extending our lineup to the lower end while still being very prestigious and very comfortable and still also has a luxury interior. And after that we will probably have two more episodes um, to finish off this campaign and then I cannot wait to try the 4.3 campaign. I have already tried it out. It's awesome. It's much more fun because it's hard and yeah, looking forward to do that. So without further ado, let's jump right into it and move on. So here we are, we're in January 2006, let's take a look at our financial report for last year. We lost 1.1 billion and that's mostly because we are currently constructing a huge factory and this is a huge project and we're only taking 40% of it off of a loan. I didn't think I would actually need a loan anymore, but it turned out to be so expensive that I needed one more loan for this campaign. Still, I'm trying to pay everything that I took out until the end of the game, which is January 2020. All right, let's plan this episode. So the Bramble will be released in 2009 and we will definitely see the first sales numbers for that. The Evan has just been released and is doing fine, currently slowly reducing the pre-orders. So this one will be fine for this episode. The Godwit will need a facelift. This is definitely something we can do later on, maybe in 2008. Claris is currently working on a facelift, so it's fine. And the Winley obviously is the car we are building this time. Bramble 3 will be phased out once the new one is there. Still also doing well getting rid of some pre-orders. All right, financial situation, still a lot of money in the bank. Currently we are losing a bit of money because of our factory reconstruction. Also, we are currently getting 60 million a month from a loan for the factory. So this will need to be repaid later on. The economy is recovering from a pretty deep depression. So that's also good. And currently we are at three and a half million points and proper prestige and reputation. Actually, my uh, reputation is higher than a prestige. Didn't think about that if you remember the beginnings of the brand. But yeah, let's get into building the new Vinley. Alright, so the chassis is pretty much standard, white motors technology, partial aluminium panels on an advanced high strength steel monocoque. For the suspension we went a bit to the cheap side, McPherson strut and torsion beam. It's a standard setup for compact cars, but not for white motors, so the first torsion beam we had, I think. But to offset these more basic choices, I went for a bit of quality, which should give us better stats all around. For the engine, we can take a look what we currently had. So we had from 1990 a V6, one liter V6. We could further work on that or we build a new one and we do it properly like you would it nowadays. We build an inline three and turbocharge it. Okay. 
Again, here we go for quality. And here we go for ultimate smoothness, or as ultimate as it gets for an inline 3. I have a lot of tech right now and I'm, and I'm always trying to use half of it, so that we are both efficient in production and better than standard. Fuel 95 is available everywhere right now. So turbo actually is quite expensive also from a material side, so that's why I don't go for a lot of quality. And same for fuel system. So it's very required, quite efficient, I hope, we'll see that, and should be fairly cheap to produce. So let's design this one.
All right, and here we are. The grill has become larger again. It was always a criticism for earlier Winleys that the grill was too small and not premium looking. Maybe I overdid it a bit this time. And the rest is pretty much standard. Pretty basic rear as well. Yeah, I think it will do the job. And yeah, let's see what we can make out of this one. All right, that's the first iteration and already it's looking good. Definitely can use longer gears. Currently already sitting at 5.3 liters. Maybe we can get below five. Yeah, maybe we do that with the economy version, which is lighter and it will get hard long life tires. So that's the difference between cooling flaps and no cooling flaps and maximum cooling airflow or 50% cooling airflow. I guess we stick with 50%, it's not like it's a utility car. And with a flow optimized under tray we can also get better economy. So let's do that. The infotainment already takes a lot of tech pool. Six points for getting standard infotainment, so I will not use quality. Also the advanced tense safety takes a lot of tech pool. So again nothing I will do here. And just some suspension optimization left to be done. Just making it a little bit more sporty from the general setup and more comfortable from the spring setup. A lot more comfort now and let's do a two-seater version and probably also a convertible and maybe we can also do a hot hatch let's check yeah only two door handles we had another handle incident with the bramble where the convertible suddenly had not only two and here yeah, this one goes below five liters excellent I know Kilrop could and would do better, but yeah, I'm happy with 5 liters. Yeah, I'll just leave it as is. So, what else do we have here? Oh, it's actually, I chose the 5 door version. <laughs> that was not the intention. Um, let me change that. I will make um, the 4 seater a 5 door version and the 2 seater a 2 door version. When I prepared the design, I was working on the 3 door version. And I didn't see it, that it was off. Better now. So we can fix the colors then. So this is not a proper 3 door version. Let's also move the fuel hatch a bit to the back. And then this is fine, it just needs a different paint. And what will this one be now? So the ones at the beginning are only sedans. I'm not interested. Also, I don't want to build a wagon because the Bramble already has a wagon. We will also be not build a huge. Oh, actually quite nice, um, the van. A nice pizza delivery vehicle for our Freenian customers. Convertible wise, we only have these two. Yeah, it seems to have one of these folding roofs. Not too happy about that, but I don't like the other version. Automatic hardtop. 
And as we found out, it's just verse in every aspect. But only this makes sense. It's not marked as a hatchback, which I think is not correct. But well, it's the way it is. Interesting that the rear window is not fully sealed. So it's not as proper as a van as I thought. But yeah, let's go with it. And it will be not a heavy delivery car, no. Light delivery. Look at this utility. Because we have now a van again, I think we will need to put this also in a huge factory. And for the fun of it, let's make a hot hatch. And first of all, of course, this needs more power. And this one can also use 98 run, I guess. Good thing is that we have all the electronics in the car because this door curve um, would be interesting to drive, I guess, without traction control in the rain. Yeah, we're getting there. 250 horsepower, I think, is my target. Here I can spend a bit of quality on the turbo. And let's make this proper sporty now. Remove the speed limiter, of course. Oh have got 280 kilometers an hour, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I could also have spent a bit of quality on aerodynamics, but I'll leave it for now. And then sporty suspension setup. And make it low. It's as low as it gets. Don't want to make it any any harder. Alright, then we have a proper hot hatch, more sportiness than comfort. 6.2 from 0 to 100. I think this could do better. Yeah, 5.9. Below 6 is enough for a hatch, I guess. And it's also front wheel drive. Not much more you can expect. Engineering looking healthy. Can definitely throw a bit more money into it. So 72 is the target. But I want to do a few modifications to the automation so that we can get more cars. Material cost is quite high, and half of that is coming from the luxury interior. I will just throw money at it. But I cannot get everything that I wanted. And the engine is better. So if we can make it proper automated, maybe we can save some engine factory size. Increase the pressure, we already know enough about engines. And then the Windley engine factory is already on a huge plot, which is excellent. And I hope I can stay this factory size. Winley factory. That's the problem. It again is only on a large plot and I want to have a huge one. So let me think. The Bramble will be discontinued very soon in 2009. 
I can choose this factory where currently the old bramble is produced and go into this one. It's just one and a half years, so I have from the discontinuation of the old bramble to the new Windley I have three years and I only need one and a half, so I can choose this factory and reuse it. This will save us quite a bit of money, even though it still costs me almost five billion. I need to optimize my engine factory a little bit, but else I'm pretty fine here. It's just a little bit of overwork. Let's check the engine and optimize um, the load on the factory. And then I guess we have a fairly decent project going on here. Numbers also all right. Let's check out our budgets. So city premium is at 33, city eco at 20, city at 19, family at around 20, delivery at 18, light delivery even less, and fun 17. So I can increase the prices a little bit, I guess. Margins are not looking too good, but that's mostly due to the luxury interior. And I'm not concerned about money. Okay, forecast is looking alright. Don't know why it's going down so much in the end. It says the convertible will not be desirable anymore, but the rest still will be. Uh, engine is one month over. adjusted my prices now but I'm good with that and then we have a project cost of 5 billion play it safe again and go for 50% and we have from 2012 onwards 8 years to pay it back and if I'm not mistaken that should be 96 months and that's the main task done so as soon as the Claris facelift is done, I will work on the facelift for the Godred. And so long I hope that we will survive. But as long as the company valuation is increasing, I am not concerned, even if we make losses. Ah, it's decreasing. <laughs> okay. So does the Windley already collect pre-orders? Yes, and everybody wants the van. I knew it. almost back to profits again because the old bramble is still killing it and still the godwit is not able i will increase uh, the max shift count for the godwit to 2.5 even if it wears out the factory but i'm planning an update anyway and why is it not only running on 1.2 shifts Oh god, that was my mistake. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, probably still from a bad forecast. So now it should be able. Yep. A lot more Godwits back to profits. That was a silly mistake. Smooth sailing for now. And we're entering a huge boom. And the new Claris update will be out very soon. Claris will be the car that's gonna be uh, getting a new version next episode. An issue with the factory of the Claris, but it's just peanuts. 100 million in total. Alright, so there we have it. The new update for the Claris is done. And we have plenty of pre-orders already, but also plenty of stock of the old one. No, no, it's not plenty. It's 14 cars of the Ultimate. Um, yeah, that should be gone pretty quickly. Bramble is going through the roof right now, as expected. And yeah, we said 
an update for what a god wit would be in line. So first of all also for the engine. Let's aim for 700 horsepower. Oh yeah, easily we can get to 700 horsepower. We can even get more. Let's check our flow. Oh yeah, we're pretty much all right, except for the valves. Okay, there we have 800 horsepower. We get dual clutch, seven gears. Out electric unlimited slip diff. Um, is it still only rear wheel drive? No, it's all wheel drive. Good. And carbon. It's quick to engineer. Yeah, definitely there with the prestige now. 90. Splitting a 66. This could be better, to be honest. And I think we're pretty good. Sporting is up to 73. Let's work on the convertible separately. I just wanted to clone the super version, that, but then I would have needed to make all of the small adjustments in the visuals again. And this one is going 372 and 0 to 100 in 2.3 seconds. Sounds reasonable. Engineering. Oh, it's actually not that bad. Let's aim for four years and then I think we don't need another Godwit for this Let's Play. And the factory is certainly big enough for the engine. And the Godwit is on a medium plot right now. The Winley Mark II, yeah, it will not be ready in time. Oh, in four years I can actually use the Winley factory. And produce our supercar in Fuenia. I think that should be fine. And then I'm actually using the factory capacity. So in four years, yeah. And uh, yeah, we're producing more than enough. Let's adjust our target shift at least um, to something more reasonable. And we can always increase the max shifts later. Budgets 170k, 208k. Yeah, so. This will be roughly our prices, let's say 120, 140. Maybe let's start lower and work our way up. Not $80, no, 80k. We won't earn a lot of money with this one, but I'm risking it. It's also just starting to work on the factory in April and in January the Windley will be ready. So, perfect timing. And I will pay these 670 million in cash without loan. Alright, another task for today is completed. And we can roll further and see how our next two releases are doing. Well, it's just one release, it's just the Bramble. Financial report says we're very balanced 100 million we gained last year and we have a new bramble and we have a lot of pre-orders for, <laughs> for the new bramble let's see how it does how much money we make from it in next month well 318 million yes and we sold 50,000 of it and we still have many, many old brambles. Are we still producing that? No, we have stock. 
So let's make sure we are no longer producing the old bramble. Uh, I guess this factory already is used by the Windley very soon. So I cannot work on the factory anymore because I already have planned to use it. So I just stop it like this and see what happens. And I also don't want new pre-orders for this one. Just want new, a few sales here. So our huge profits are currently coming from selling off old brambles. In two months we should be clear. And yeah, it's taking in new pre-orders. Oh god. Okay, now no more pre-orders. And now we should get real numbers. I still have quite a few pre-orders, 50,000 or so, because I didn't pay attention. So let's keep it like this. We will pay, we will pay them back at some point. Um, yeah, now we have 148 million per month we can spend. It's also interesting that we are accumulating quite a bit of stock with other cars. Because the Bramble is too good now. The Bramble is taking over all of the sales. But it's fine. So 148 and we can invest that either into marketing or R&D. So let's check our status. Ooh, it's so green. Yeah, Ahana is not yet there. We're spending as much in Ahana as in uh, Gasmia. Yep, there goes our money. We have a little bit more for research. Maximize for interior. Oh no, no, not maximize. Maximize would be 15. And we're in 2010. And it says 10 years before the game will end. Financial report. Nice profit of 2 billion. But we're back in the negative again. I can live with that for now. Company valuation up to 17 billion. And yeah, Bramble is still collecting pre-orders like crazy. Now that the old production is out, um, the Bramble is just killing it. I will increase the prices. Where are we selling right now? Currently no delivery vehicles are being sold. But we have a very nice overall market share now that the Bramble contributes. The van still... <laughs> okay, it's not counted at sales, but the van. Look at this. It's, it's completely insane. Already 50,000 pre-orders. And we're still two years away. Yeah, that will be interesting. Um, for now, I would say that's it. We will get the new Clearis next time. And this will be the fourth generation and the best car in the world that has ever been there. And it will also be the last car that we build from scratch. And for this one, we will try to break through 100 prestige, 100 comfort and still sell it and make a profit off of it. That will be the main goal for next episode. And for the last one, we will then bring it to the end and look back to what we have achieved. And I hope you are looking forward to the end of this campaign and to the beginning of a brand new one. Thank you all for watching and see you all soon. Bye bye.